Waco, Texas. It's a mid-sized city situated about halfway between Dallas and Austin and is a little less than a two-hour drive from either location. You may have heard of Waco before, probably having to do with the Branch Davidians and the siege of their compound. It is also the home of Baylor University, a well-known private educational institution in the state of Texas. But did you know that Waco is also the birthplace of the soda, Dr. Pepper? Here's the story of the origin and the growth of the well-known soda brand. Having grown up in Texas, I have heard a lot of people from other states joke about how Dr. Pepper tastes like medicine. I get it. It's quite different when compared to Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Its unique taste has led to speculations about the soda's ingredients. There's long been an urban legend that one of the ingredients is prune juice. Dr. Pepper insists that their formula, which is secret, does not contain either prune juice or pepper. Now, as a Texan, I'm obligated to call soft drinks Coke, but to avoid confusing Dr. Pepper with Coca-Cola, I'll use the term soda. The story of Dr. Pepper begins in 1885 in the old corner drugstore located on the bottom floor of the McClellan Hotel. The drugstore was owned by Wade Morrison and one of his employees, Charles Alderton, was the pharmacist. In addition to dispensing medication, part of Alderton's job also involved mixing drinks for customers. Soda was prepared by mixing syrup with carbonated water and often ice, somewhat similar to how soda fountains work today. Because of the pooling or jerking of the soda water handle to make the drink, people who prepared soft drinks were often referred to as soda jerks. By the way, Dr. Pepper's introduction in 1885 makes it the oldest major soda in the United States, predating the introduction of Coca-Cola by one year. The old corner drugstore is long gone now, and today, in its place, is a parking lot. Alderton's new drink mix was a local success, with even store owner Morrison being a fan. Alderton's drink mix was not originally called Dr. Pepper. It was actually referred to as a Waco. Speaking of flavors, I'm really proud of that one I did over at the fountain. I used to enjoy mixing different flavors together in different combinations. I've been given lots of credit for creating a new soda flavor, these days, it's called a Dr. Pepper, but back in the beginning, everyone just called it a Waco. But for a few years, back in the 1800s, Waco was the only place in the world you could get a Dr. Pepper. There's a lot of uncertainty as to how the drink acquired the name Dr. Pepper, although one of the more widespread stories is that Morrison, who had moved to Waco from Rural Retreat, Virginia, had previously been an employee in Dr. Charles T. Pepper's drugstore and was quite taken by Pepper's daughter. Charles Pepper disapproved of the relationship, and the disheartened Morrison moved to Waco to run his own drugstore. But he never forgot about Dr. Pepper's daughter. The Dr. Pepper story began in an old-fashioned drugstore very much like this one in Waco, Texas, back in 1885. A young pharmacist named Charles Alderton decided he was a little bored with the usual soft drink flavors, raspberry, strawberry, lemon, and sarsaparilla. So he decided to mix things up a little. What he came up with was a caramel-colored combination of fruit flavors and spices, but he didn't have a name for it. His associate, Wade Morrison, had an idea. He wanted to impress his girlfriend's father, so they named the soft drink after the old gentleman, Dr. Pepper. Well, that's how it got its name. But Morrison did not go back to Virginia and marry the doctor's daughter, as so many people have said. I should mention the history behind the name, Dr. Pepper, is unclear, 
and the aforementioned story is unlikely to be true, but it is one of the most commonly told. Soon enough, the popularity of Dr. Pepper was such that Alderton and Morrison were unable to produce enough syrup for themselves and other drug stores in Waco. This is where Robert S. Lazenby, a chemist and owner of the Circle A Ginger Ale Bottling Company, comes into the story. Lazenby was a fan of Dr. Pepper as well, and partnered with Morrison to create the Artesian Manufacturing and Bottling Works Company in 1891. The early history of Dr. Pepper is a bit messy. In 1898, the Southwestern Soda Fountain Company of Dallas acquired the right to produce Dr. Pepper syrup. In 1902, they changed their name to the Dr. Pepper Company. In 1907, the aforementioned Dr. Pepper Company, formerly the Southwestern Soda Fountain Company, moved to Waco to center their production in the newly constructed bottling plant. This brings me to the Dr. Pepper Museum in Waco. This building was built in 1906 to produce Dr. Pepper drinks and syrup. The museum is fairly small, but well kept and contains many artifacts and exhibits relating to Dr. Pepper. The museum is run by a nonprofit organization, but is supported by Dr. Pepper, among other entities. Now, if you've ever been to Atlanta, Georgia, and seen the Coca-Cola Museum, you might be a little disappointed at the small size of the Dr. Pepper Museum, but it is constrained by the size of the building, which is located in downtown Waco. You get one free fountain drink with the purchase of a ticket, which can be redeemed at the East Wing building, which is located across a courtyard from the museum. There are three floors to the museum, with the first floor showing the history of Dr. Pepper, housing artifacts, and containing a replica of the old drugstore with an animatronic Charles Alderton. In addition, the first floor also contains old factory machinery and an artesian well where water was once drawn. The second floor contains more history particularly focused on advertisements and the cultural legacy of Dr. Pepper. And the third floor is dedicated mostly to W.W. Clemens. Clemens was a longtime employee of Dr. Pepper, who worked his way up to eventually become CEO and was a driving force behind the creation of this museum. In case you're wondering, W.W. Clemens was named after President Woodrow Wilson, who was in office from 1913 to 1921. Clemens was born in 1914 and died in 2002. There's also a small gift shop adjacent to the museum and a separate from the museum and the East Wing building. But back to the history. Prior to the construction of the Waco bottling plant, Dr. Pepper was first introduced to the world at the 1904 World's Fair Exposition in St. Louis, Missouri. In 1923, the Circle A Corporation filed for bankruptcy, but shortly afterwards, the old Dr. Pepper Company and remnants of the Circle A Corporation were joined to form a new Dr. Pepper Company. In 1922, the offices of Dr. Pepper Company were moved to Dallas, Texas, although the plant in Waco continued to manufacture drinks. The Waco plant continued to operate until 1965, when it was replaced in favor of a more modern facility. Shortly afterwards, the building was sold to Baylor University, who would use it for storage. During the period of the Waco plant's operation, a devastating tornado struck downtown Waco in the afternoon of May 11, 1953. A dark and gloomy overcast blocked out the sun, and a powerful F5 tornado tore a path through downtown Waco and caused substantial damage to the northwest face and roof of the Dr. Pepper building. The scars of the tornado are still visible today in the different colored bricks that were used in the repair of the structure. The Waco tornado killed 114 people and injured nearly 600 more, making it one of the deadliest tornadoes in Texas history. The tornado was accompanied by pouring rain and thunderous hail, which combined with the poor severe weather alert system at the time, gave little warning of an approaching tornado. For many of the victims, by the time they saw the tornado, it was too late. It also caused around $41 million in property damage, which, Accounting for inflation is about $467 million in 2023. One of the consequences of this devastating tornado was the further refinement and implementation of radar in the detection and tracking of tornadoes, which is a pretty new field at the time. Dr. Pepper's popularity was never on the level of Coca-Cola or even Pepsi, but they did manage to become the fourth largest cola company in the United States. 
Dr. Pepper had a variety of promotional ad campaigns throughout their history. For example, you may be familiar with their I'm a Pepper slogan and the associated song with David Naughton. The Be a Pepper campaign was one of Dr. Pepper's most successful, and you can still find I'm a Pepper shirts today. The ad campaign that really interests me, though, is one that is making a bit of a comeback, and that is the 10, 2, and 4 campaign. In fact, I bought some Dr. Pepper recently, with the old 10, 2, and 4 logo prominently displayed on both the bottle and packaging. Now, what do those numbers mean, and how did it originate? Well, the 10, 2, and 4 refer to the different times of the day, specifically 10 in the morning and 2 and 4 in the afternoon. In the 1920s, Dr. Walter Eddy of Columbia University was studying human metabolism and came to the conclusion that blood sugar level reached a low around 10.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., 4.30 p.m., and that fatigue could be avoided by eating or drinking something around these times. Dr. Pepper took this discovery and created their Drink a Bite to Eat at 10, 2, and 4 ad campaign. Now, obviously, telling people to consume your product three times a day would be great for sales, and I do find it peculiar that Dr. Pepper revived this ad campaign without going into the details behind it. I suspect it's because people today are more health conscious, and suggesting people drink a sugary beverage three times a day doesn't seem very healthy. So, if you were wondering what the numbers 10, 2, and 4 meant with Dr. Pepper, that's the history. In fact, the 10, 2, and 4 ad campaign figures so prominently in Dr. Pepper's history that even Dr. Pepper's Collectors Club is referred to as the 10, 2, and 4 Collectors Club. Additionally, to simplify their name, the period after the doctor in Dr. Pepper was removed from the trademark in the 1950s, so the correct way to spell Dr. Pepper is without the period. After Dr. Pepper moved production away from the old Waco bottling plant in 1965, the building fell into disrepair. However, as the old bottling plant was a big part of the history of Dr. Pepper, it was reacquired by the company in 1979. In 1988, Dr. Pepper donated the building to a nonprofit organization to be repurposed as a museum. The building went through extensive renovations throughout 1990 and 1991 in preparation to reopen the building as a museum. The renovations were so thorough that they even brought in the same artist, C.B. Morgan, to repaint the mural that he had painted in the 1940s. The museum first opened to the public on May 11, 1991, although the building would not be fully restored until 1997. As stated before, former Dr. Pepper CEO and Chairman Emeritus W.W. W. Clements took a keen interest in the project. By 1980, Clemens was no longer the CEO, as the company had changed hands a number of times, even going private after having been acquired by the investment firm Forstman Little & Company in 1984. The 1970s saw Dr. Pepper go into debt, as it acquired a number of different brands, including the purchase of Canada Dry in 1982. After going private in 1984, Canada Dry was sold to R.J. Reynolds. Yeah, that R.J. Reynolds who then sold the brand to Cadbury Schweppes in 1986. In 1986, Dr. Pepper merged with 7up after both were acquired by a different investment firm, Hicks & Haas, now known as HM Capital Partners. In 1995, Dr. Pepper 7up was once again acquired by another company, this time by Cadbury Schweppes. Yes, the same company that had purchased Canada Dry from R.J. Reynolds in 1986. A new headquarters was established in Plano, Texas, and the old Art Deco-style Dallas headquarters was abandoned and subsequently demolished. In 2008, Cadbury took their beverage brands and spun it off into the Dr. Pepper Snapple Group. Finally, in 2018, the Dr. Pepper Snapple Group was acquired by Keurig Green Mountain to form Keurig Dr. Pepper, which is the current corporate state of Dr. Pepper today. Shortly after Dr. Pepper's acquisition by Keurig, it was announced that the headquarters of Dr. Pepper would be moved from Plano to Frisco, where they are now based. Keurig maintains their headquarters in Burlington, Massachusetts. Fun fact, Dr. Pepper's current headquarters is right next to the Ford Center, the practice facility of the NFL team, the Dallas Cowboys. Well, if you found the past 40 years of Dr. Pepper's corporate ownership confusing, you're not alone. I found it confusing as well. As it stands today, Keurig Dr. Pepper 
boasts an impressive collection of brands, which includes well-known beverages such as Sunkist, a and Root Beer, 7-Up, and, yeah, Canada Dry. So they've come full circle. Anyways, that's the story about how local Texas soda grew and spread throughout the United States and eventually became a multinational brand. I hope you enjoyed the video and perhaps learned something new. I'll keep putting out new videos about topics that interest me and hopefully you. Thanks again for watching folks and I hope you have a nice day.